Hello, this is Ramblings of an Undisciplined Mind podcast for Saturday, September 7th, 2015. So it is Saturday, I've moved into the man cave, and this is actually coming from inside my studio, formerly known as my daughter's closet. It's a little echoey yet. I'm going to be putting stuff up to deaden the walls. I've not done that yet, so you're getting kind of an echo echo chamber thing today but I wanted to try this out and try out my my temporary setup here um, going through my mixer into the recorder and I'm using a music stand for lack of anything better we went this morning and saw Spectre and I thought I'd talk about Spectre a little bit uh, all in all it was a good movie I think Skyfall was a little better. It seemed to be a, a little slow in the beginning. Oh, and before I get into, into any details, there will be major spoilers in this. I'm not going to try to be coy and vague and whatever. So there's going to be spoilers. If you haven't seen it yet, stop. Stop and, uh, and, and you know, come back and listen to this after you've watched it. Musically... Musically, I guess I was a little disappointed. It's the same same composer as last time. And he used major, major chunks of the score from Skyfall, which I love and I know very well. So it stood stood out to me that, you know, oh, I know this music. There's, you, know, you get the whole opening scene, as you always have on these bomb films now, which is a big action scene. And until the very, very, very end of that, as it was starting to move into the credits, Every single note was straight from the uh, Skyfall uh, script. So, but there were some cool musical bits that were new that were added. Is it enough to make me want to buy the whole soundtrack? I don't know because it didn't seem like it was. It was. Um, there was, you know, it didn't seem like there was that much new stuff. There was, there were one or two things that were just like, oh, that's just so beautiful, and they might be enough. Uh, there was one piece in particular that they had a choir behind me and and uh, behind behind me behind the music and, and and it just it struck me as beautiful as like uh, Duel of the Fates for uh, Phantom Menace. It was just really nice. Um, you know, visually it was stunning as always. I tried to really pay attention. I didn't think about it about halfway through, but I tried. You know, I tried to look to say, you know, are they trying to 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 do an uh, a 1960s kind of color effect. I talked about that a few weeks ago where I wondered. And, you know, they might have warmed up the colors a little bit. Um, but I don't I don't know that they were really trying for a period effect there. It didn't really seem feel like that to me. It felt like a, a very contemporary movie. Um, so I don't think they were really trying to go for that. Um, As we're going through this whole thing with in the series, I, I would think to myself, gee, I wonder if, um, and here's where the spoilers start, I wonder if Bond will be off the reservation for this movie. Because it seems like, I don't know, every other movie he's off the reservation. I think he was technically off the reservation for Quantum of Solace. Um, or Solace, I think it says Solace. Quantum of Solace. Uh, and, and, you know, it always seemed to be, you know, throughout the, the history of Bond, it seems like there's always times where he's, he's off the reservation. He's doing what he shouldn't be doing. Um, and as it turned out, that's what this whole movie was. Um, but it was kind of cool that it turned out it, he was doing it not just because, um, you know, for revenge for, for some reason, necessarily, um, or for some other lesser reason, maybe. Um, but he had a, a video from, from M, from, from Judy Dench M, uh, that was saying, you know, if you've received this and I've died, you need to go kill this person and don't miss the funeral. Um. So, yeah, so, so that, that was what was going on at the beginning bit in Mexico City. Um, I don't really want to recount the plot so much, but just kind of the stuff that did or did not work for me. Um, I was a little confused at the very beginning. 
after the mix after the opening credits are done you know you know uh, bonds put on indefinite leave and then the very next scene was uh tanner m's assistant taking bond to cq and i was a little confused by that um Because I'm like, why is he going to see Q if he's on leave? They did this thing where they gave him this thing called Super Blood, which is like nanites that got put into his bloodstream, and that enabled them to track him from all over the world. And M wanted him tracked because he didn't trust him. Um, and, and that was the reason that they took him there. I, for some reason, the reason didn't stick, and I was thinking about it after we got home, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that was the reason. Uh, Q ended up giving Bond a watch, that, uh, as he says, is a really loud alarm, you know, meaning it explodes. And it did. We got to see that later. Um, and uh, he also showed him this new car. And it was, it was a, I think it was an Aston Martin, but a really new snazzy one. Um <clears throat> But, uh, you know, it's, oh, this world's going to go to you, but now that you're, you're on, on, what are they called? Suspension. It, now that you're on suspension, it'll go to 009. Um, and you, you can see it coming, you know, so, you know, they, they you know, and Bond's kind of looking at it and, you know, so why do you even bother showing it? to him you know so they have a shot a little later on it's supposed to be like the next morning and q's getting in and somebody says to him oh the 09's here early for the car and and q's like oh great and and he gets to the place where the car is supposed to be and there's just like these double doors that got to open up so we can see it and it's gone you know and bond left like a, a bottle of champagne and ice for him i don't know what that was about um but you could see, I, I, I knew right away he was going to steal the car. It was very obvious that the car was getting stolen. There was just no way, shaper. Um, let's see. No way around that. Um, there was something else that was just like... Well, I will say, I had one prediction about this film that I thought was going to be... That I thought was going to be uh, happening that did not. Yeah, I saw the... I saw the video for the bond song probably about a month ago or whenever they released it it was at least a couple weeks i'm thinking it was more than more of a month ago and this is kind of a really haunting haunting love song and so i was thinking to myself well they're gonna have they're gonna have the uh, storyline which hasn't been done in a long time i think it was in I don't remember if it was in Roger Moore or if it was in Sean Connery. I want to say Sean Connery, but I could be wrong. It could be Roger. But the, where uh, Bond got married, you know, found the woman of his dreams, got married, and then she got killed uh, by Blofeld, the guy that's in charge of Spectre. So, you know, we have Spectre, given the name of the movie. Uh, we've got the, the bad guy uh, playing Blofeld, who is Blofeld. Um, and he finds this woman and I'm thinking, okay, they're going to fall madly in love and, and then she'll get killed. Um, and I was 50% wrong with that. One of the things that's kind of cool about this movie is it basically ties all the Daniel Craig movies together. One of the plot points is, is that everybody that Bond has interacted with through Casino Royale, Quantum of Solace, uh, Skyfall. Am I missing one? No, I guess not. Just those three. Um, but all of those were uh, being driven by Spectre. Uh, so Blofeld says, that, oh, you know. I've really been the, I've really been the architect of all your pain all these years. Uh, it turns out the guy that played both Blofeld used to um, used to uh, have a different name and uh, he had a pass with Bond because after Bond's parents died, it was it was Blofeld's father. His name was different then. It was Blofeld's father that um, took um, James in and 
and and kind of helped you know kind of raised him and apparently there was some uh i don't know why you know you know kind of the you know when you're the older kid and a new kid shows up and you're feeling kind of kind of ignored there was some there was some uh lingering feelings about that um with blofeld um so that kind of tied his childhood again, which was another aspect from Skyfall. So they did a nice job trying to come up with a cohesive plot. One of the things that I, you know, that it was kind of like the culmination of everything we've seen Daniel Craig do as Bond. One of the things was where his Vespa kept coming up. And that was the woman that he fell in love with. Um, well, I don't remember she he fell in love with her during during Casino Royale. I didn't think he did. I don't think he did until Quantum of Solace. Um, but she died at the end. So they, I guess they did kind of do that. I didn't really, I didn't really see it as the whole, you know, they killed my wife thread, but they tried to make it like that. And I guess maybe that's what the song was like. The problem was Vespa. I mean, they didn't give Vespa a ton of time, but it's a romantic interest. You know, she kept, you know, her picture showed up a couple times. Um, her name was brought up two or three times um and i almost felt like and you know and he's obviously still pining for her a bit and, and it just kind of felt to me like they really gave more plot time i don't know that it's necessarily screen time but you know it, it felt like the relationship between james and vespa was more important within the plot of the movie really than the relationship between um the main character main the main female lead whose name whose character's name i do not recall i'll have to look it up but between her and bond um i mean they were really kind of antagonistic you know they were getting along but she was always she was always you know keeping him at arm's length um and you know and there were there wasn't a whole lot of warmth going on there and and then they um, they had this big fight on the train with this guy that was from Spectre, uh, who was this big hulking brute, and it took the two of them to take care of this guy. And and uh, as they're sitting there panting from the exertion of, 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 of getting rid of this guy, uh, she turns to Bond and says, so what do we do now? You know, and apparently the answer to that is, is to do a uh, stress-relieving sex session. Uh, because the next thing you see, they're tearing each other's clothes off in their in their cabin, and after that, they're a couple. You know, it, it was it was a little weird, because, you know, you know, it wasn't like they hated each other, but she was just being reserved, like she doesn't know who to trust, because she's been on the lamb, she's been hiding, not really on the lamb, but you know, she's she's had a rough life, and and she knows what type of man Bond is, because her father was one was someone similar, and she doesn't want that. Um, you know, so she's kind of keeping her distance and then, and then all of a sudden, you know, it's not even, it's not even, they didn't even do a scene like that where, you know, where it was like, well, look, I know we just, I know we just had sex, but it was just because, you know, we had that adrenaline to get rid of from the, from the big fight. You know, I don't know. It just didn't, you know, it just, to me, that didn't flow very well, that relationship. Um, yeah, at the end, you know, it does feel like they're intending it to be a longer term relationship. I guess they did that much well. Um, you know, it wasn't your typical James, you know, they did drive off at the end together. Um, but it didn't feel like your typical James Bond, uh, he's in a, he's in bed with a woman at the end and you know that it's just, you know, they're just having fun for now and you won't see her in the next movie. Um, you know, this I could see could be continuing, um, into the, into future movies. It kind of had that feel to it. So they did, did at least that much better or did that well, I guess. Um, but it didn't. I don't know. I, it just didn't really feel to me like they were falling in love necessarily. It was just kind of a, like a, well, we're kind of not in love and then we're in love all of a sudden. And it's like, mm. I mean, if you could accept the fact that they're in love, it was okay. But if you can't 
if it doesn't seem real to you, then it's kind of like, well, what the heck just happened? What else? The guy who played Blofeld was was pretty amazing. I they they if you saw Skyfall, the guy that did that one, he was he was he was a little creepy. Um but he was also capable of doing horrible things without any remorse, and you saw that. And I like that guy. I like the I like the character, I like how the actor played him. Blofeld's similar in that he's a little creepy, but he's different. He's more of a, I don't know, quietly intense guy. And from him, you can feel waves of, of evil. He's an evil guy. He has this evil organization called Spectre, and he orders evil things done. And he does evil things. And at one point, he's got Bond strapped into this chair, and he's got literally little drill bits. I mean, teeny tiny little drill bits drilling in the Bond's head and his neck. Um, I mean, there's no gore because it was just really small. And, you know, like there was one point where the drill bit comes out, and you just see like a little drop of blood fall from it. Um, the point was to cause Bond pain. Uh, and, and, yeah, he was going to. Um, Kill him, but then, of course, you don't kill James Bond. Are you insane? So, yeah, so I, all in all, I liked it. I, I, I'll, you know, I probably want to see it again at some point when it comes out on DVD. I'll get it. Uh, or Blu-ray, I should say, these days. Um, you know, I, I, I do think there were some pacing issues. Um, because it seemed to drag at places. It was a two and a half hour movie. They had some beautiful locales, um, and by and large, the the you know I think the acting was very good. You know, uh, Daniel Craig is obviously very comfortable in the role. It is kind of ironic if this is going to be his last movie. He's made some comments, kind of hinting at that. It's uh, that this might be his last Bond. That it's it's kind of fitting. Um, it's kind of fitting that, uh, you know, this movie kind of tied up the whole Daniel Craig, James Bond experience in a bow. Um, so I think we're going to be hearing more from Spectre going forward. Um, Blofeld was not killed. Uh, so that should be interesting. I mean, in the original films, um, you know, Spectre was, was around quite a bit. So I think it'd be nice to kind of continue that, continue with Spectre and kind of have it really be an us versus them kind of kind of thing. Anyway, I don't know how long am I. I can't see. I'm at 10 minutes. I guess I'll let that be that. Yeah, so on the whole, I would give it probably a B plus, maybe an E minus. Probably a B plus, I would say. I would like a little bit more originality to the score, even though I like the music that he used from the first score. I was I was kind of looking forward to say, you know, the Skyfall score. I keep wanting to say Skyrim. I have to stop myself. The Skyfall score just blew my socks off, and I really wanted this score to do the same. And it it did in a couple small places, but there was just so much music that was getting reused. And while I enjoyed hearing it again in a theatrical setting. I, I I was I was hoping for more new music that was going to knock my socks off, and I didn't get quite as much of that as I would uh, as I would have liked. You know, I do hope that I do hope that um, Daniel Craig can you know continues. I don't think he's that old. He's got nice chemistry with the woman who plays Money Penny, who was the one that was in Skyfall, and the guy who plays Q, who was the one that was in Skyfall. Um, and Ray Fiennes is back as M, uh, and that there. They just do well together. Um, I would like to see that continue, if possible. But you know, they don't. They don't come to me and say, "What do you think?" <laughs> they should, but they do not. Anyway, uh, I'm going to let this go. I will be back on Monday, back in the car, and I'll be talking to you then. So, be seeing you.